In my talk, I will go on screening approaches to detect and identify pollutants in the aquatic environment. In my talk, I will first give a short, a very short introduction on polar pollutants in the water cycle, on approaches for screening or environmental profiling. We will talk about the workflow beginning from LCQ of mass spectrometric measurements to the data evaluation. And we will talk about the results for surface water, which is affected by wastewater treatment plant effluents. And uh, to show this, we use two approaches. One is suspect screening, others a non-target uh, screening approach. I will explain this in detail later. Why are we interested in screening techniques? Because surface water is a very important ecosystem. It's also a very important source for drinking water production. Therefore, we have to maintain a very high water quality. But water quality is affected by a lot of anthropogenic activities connected uh, to the input of chemicals to the environment. For example, in the European Union, we have more than 100,000 registered chemicals for which are roughly 30 to 70,000 in daily use. And in addition to uh, the characterization of classical contaminants, which is based on persistency, for example, uh, the half-life in water of 40 days or in sediments of 120 days, we have to uh, look at bioconcentration factors and also toxicity uh, of the compounds. We have, in the case of polar pollutants, a constant input, for example, uh, from, from different sources, from point sources like wastewater treatment plants. And uh, in this context, uh, we have to deal with a lot of polar persistent compounds like perfluorinated surfactants, like pharmaceuticals, carbamazepine, or the antibiotic sulfur metoxazole. Another question is which metabolites and transformation products uh, we have uh, to consider in, in this context. And uh, because we increase the number of compounds still to a very high number of compounds, uh, we have to use these screening techniques where we uh, are able just to characterize the compound pattern in these natural environments. We see these compounds also uh, popping up in headlines of scientific literature or also in, in newspapers, for example. Uh, in the first example, we see the occurrence of benzotriazole because uh, it's in dishwasher washer detergents as an anti-corrosive, and because of that, uh, it's going to uh, wastewater, and uh, in wastewater treatment, it's not completely removed, and because of that, we have it uh, already still in drinking water. Another question is about uh, all the pharmaceutical compounds occurring in drinking water because they are discharged to surface waters and groundwater. Another question would be how can we characterize the behavior of people by the compound pattern uh, which is occurring in the environment. For example, here uh, there's an occurrence of a metabolite of cocaine which gives us an idea on the amount of a consumed cocaine in uh, these areas. Here an example for the perfluorinated compounds which occurred in groundwater due to uh, firefighting activities and uh, with the uh, firefighting foams these uh, compounds are discharged to the environment. A last uh, headline here is uh, the occurrence of artificial sweeteners, for example here acesulfam, which occurs in a lot of diet food and diet drinks and we can use these compounds ideally as a tracer. So we see a tracer uh, for wastewater and uh, impact of wastewater to different uh, waters in the environment. 